<laughs> Welcome. I am so glad you're here with me today. Our talk title for today is, Are You Sailing on the Ocean of Inspiration Today? Now, when you think about the ocean of inspiration, the first thing that I think about is the ocean. What is the ocean? Tell me, what is the ocean to you? Life. This is the interactive part. You get to <laughs> <laughs> How do you define ocean? Lots of water. Lots of water. Huge, Lots of water. huge body of salt water. Salt Lots of water. Life in it. Source of life. Breath of life. Magnificent. Source of breath of life. Big, vast. Mm. Vast. Magnificent. Magnificent. Great. So I wanted to look up the word ocean and see what the ocean is. And it was many of the things that you're saying here. Yes, a lot of people define the ocean as salt water, something that covers 72% of the Earth's surface. So you're right. And then, you know, other people would say, well, there's five major oceans. One person said, some people use the word ocean and sea interchangeably. And then I stumbled upon the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And Merriam-Webster says, the ocean is a vast expanse. Mm -hmm. And I love that because I'm not just limited to salt water anymore mm -hmm. or to water at all. A vast expanse. And then, as I read on, it talked about how you can have a vast expanse of clouds. Do you see the ocean of clouds here? Mm -hmm. And many of you have used the word vast as you've spoken today, mm -hmm. but I didn't hear expanse put on that. So the vast expanse. Another part of the definition was the ocean of grass. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that was interesting because it certainly <laughs> takes you out of the water, doesn't it? Yes. Even though there's so much water in each of these blades of grass, you can have an ocean of grass it also talked about Russia being an ocean of land, mm -hmm. a vast expanse of land mm -hmm. here. So I thought that was good for the Russian people on the boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do we have Russian people? Mm -hmm. There's also an ocean of light. I love this picture because it shows the ocean, but do you see the horizon on the ocean of light? Mm -hmm. So there's always more, more that can be done. It invites us to continue on. And we have an ocean of light in electric light, in neon light, in candles. There's all kinds of expression in the ocean, isn't there? Mm -hmm. So we don't just limit ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we move on to inspiration, the ocean of inspiration. So this vast expanse, what is inspiration? Well, from Science of Mind textbook, page 602, which is the glossary, it says that inspiration from the human side means contact with the subconscious mind of the individual or race. And certainly we have talked about race consciousness and how that comes to us. But it also says for inspiration from the divine, it means contact with the universal spirit. And that's where I really thrive, is looking at how do I contact that universal spirit. How do I pull that divine in for me to make that personal? Have you thought about how you make the divine personal in your life? Do you have spiritual practices that make the divine real to you each day? As you do that, that's what helps you sail on the ocean of inspiration. We get inspiration from all kinds of places. And sometimes inspiration comes in unexpected ways. It's being open to this whole ocean of inspiration, the vast expanse of everything that's there that can help build us up, can help us be more than what we thought we could be. And so as we embrace that in many different forms, we see that we are expanded, we are more. 
there's a story about a man who was walking past an elephant trainer. Mm -hmm. Now the elephant trainer had all of these adult elephants there mm -hmm. and he had them tied by a little rope to the front leg. And the man that walked by was just amazed that these majestic animals were only tied by this small little rope. And he turned around and he went back to the elephant trainer and he said, tell me, why do the elephants stay here tied by these little ropes? They could break loose from that at any time. And the trainer said, well, yes, they could. But when they were small elephants, a rope this size would hold them. And so we trained them by tying this rope to their leg. And they knew that they couldn't go any further. As they've grown to be adult elephants, they still believe that this small rope will hold them. And so they don't try to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Ernest Holmes, one of my favorite quotes of his, says, we are bound by nothing except belief. Mm -hmm. So I ask you, what beliefs do you hold on to that keep you tied like the adult elephants that really are old beliefs that limit you, that don't allow you to be living and dancing in that vast expanse of life? What excuses do you use to justify the limits that you put on your life? Oh, I've had some of my own. How about this? You don't know my family. You don't know where I've come from. Well, if you really knew me, you wouldn't ask me to do such a thing as that. Don't we use excuses like that to limit ourselves? So that we don't have to step up. We don't have to grow to be something bigger. And so I encourage you to look at what do you do in your life? And how can you let go, release some of those old beliefs, and allow yourself to move away from that small little rope that holds you, that binds you? Because you know, divine spirit living in you, as you and through you, wants to offer an unlimited life. Why do I want to limit my life when my source has so much more for me? Our beliefs are what really lock us into how we live. I love this picture because of all the locks on here. And we never know what's locking someone else and what blocks them from living their full life. As practitioners, as ministers, as ministerial students, I feel that it's our calling to help people realize what is locking them or blocking them from walking through those gates, from being all that they can be. And isn't that what we do each time we sit with someone, we give them our attention, we help remind them of the principles that we live by, that we know work for us each day. So remember the locks and remember that you don't have to be locked down because the ocean of inspiration can be the ocean of light, the ocean of grass, the ocean of love, the ocean of presence, just being present. What people want is for somebody to recognize them, to love them, and to honor who they are. As we do that, then we can pull people and encourage people to be more than what they've been in the past to break through from the locks that have kept them bound. I see that inspiration comes from two different ways. It comes from within and it comes from without. I love this picture. When I first saw it, I was so drawn to it because to me, this is inspiration from without. We get inspired because of pictures we see because of sights we have, because of sounds, stories, movies, songs, all kinds of things inspire us from what we see on the outside. It's the surface of the ocean. 
but there is so much more going on within. And I think it's very valid that we encourage people to be inspired by the outside. You did a wonderful job. I love the way you commanded the stage. I loved your talk. You have such a beautiful face. I see God in you when you smile. It's great to be inspired that way. Inspiration from the inside. I love this picture because it's under the ocean. It's in the midst. I had a talk that I talked about where God was all around us and we couldn't see God because we were encompassed in the spirit. And so the two little girls in our congregation were there that Sunday. And I had them come up front and I had them look for God as the little fish in the ocean. And so I taught them how to flap their wings, their little <laughs> fins. And they swam to the back of the room looking for God. And they swam to this side and they swam to that side. And they swam back to the front. And they couldn't find God anywhere because God was all around. Spirit was everywhere. And for us, when we are inspired from within, for me, I should say, the hardest part is to be silent, to sit in the stillness. I was mesmerized this morning in our meditation where Mary Ellen said, we're sitting still and yet we're moving forward. And what a beautiful analogy that was for me. When I can just sit in spirit, when I can go within, I can be much more inspired. So, listening with our heart, opening ourselves to spirit, that's important. Mm -hmm. There's a story mm -hmm. about a little boy, and he wrote it as an adult, but he talked about one of the really fun things that his family would do is they would have breakfast for dinner. <laughs> and so mom would fix a nice breakfast <laughs> and serve it, but she served it in, as their evening meal. Well, this boy said on this particular occasion that his mother had worked really hard that day and she came home and she fixed breakfast for dinner. <laughs> and when she got it all done, she slid the plate of fried eggs onto the table. She slid the plate of sausage and bacon onto the table, and she put out a platter of biscuits, but the biscuits were burnt. The little boy watched his father, who took his eggs and took his meat, and he picked up a burnt biscuit, and the little boy looked at him, because he couldn't believe his dad was going to eat this burnt biscuit. And his dad looked at his son and he smiled. He took the biscuit and opened it. He put butter and jelly on it and he proceeded to eat it. And as the dinner progressed, the little boy watched because his father picked up a second biscuit and put it on his plate. He put butter and jelly on it and he ate a second burnt biscuit. When the meal was over, and the mom and dad were clearing the table. He heard his mother say to his father, I'm so sorry I burnt the biscuits. And his father said, I love burnt biscuits. <laughs> so that night when the little boy was getting ready for bed, he climbed up into his dad's lap to tell him good night. And he said, Daddy, do you really like burnt biscuits? And his dad said, son, mom worked very, very hard today. She had a rough day, and yet she still made us dinner. A little burnt biscuit is not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> For me, the inspiration there is, no matter what the outward appearance, coming from a point of love, being clear that I am here to show up as love. A little burnt biscuit didn't hurt anybody. What intentions do people have around us that we judge as, you should have done that better? That could have been different. I don't like that. 
And has anybody ever done that about themselves? I'm a master at self-judgment here. That's inspiration from within and without. Seeing what goes on in families like that, and then to be able to say, here's what I'm going to commit to. I told you all about my family um, a couple days ago and about going to them, knowing that my experience has always been that I am less than. And when I chose to come and show up as love, my experience was so much different. It was so much more embracing and so much fun to be around them. They had not changed one iota, but I had. My perception was different. And when I took time to be silent, to remember that a little burnt biscuit never hurt anybody, I could be there as love. Life is not a dress rehearsal. And I, sorry, I have learned that you don't get a second chance for a lot of opportunities. This is my partner, Tom. Two days before he had his pancreatic surgery, he went out and ran three miles that day. His legs really aren't that skinny. The picture looks <laughs> <laughs> He does have skinny legs and knobby knees. <laughs> I have learned that I don't get a second chance to go to the oncologist with him for the first time, to go to the radiologist for the first time, to be there to hold his hand when he's preparing for surgery. And there was a time in my life when I would really look at that and say, I've got to work. You know, I'm sorry you're going through that, but my job is really important and I need to do this. And I just happen to be blessed with a boss right now that said, you take the time you need, do whatever you need to be with him. Not only that, but spirit provided me with a new boss just a few months before this all happened who is a certified oncology nurse, who said, let me tell you what to expect. Let me tell you what you should ask the doctors. What a blessing. I could not have asked for a better ocean of inspiration. I didn't need to lock myself down into what I knew because Spirit was providing me with something much greater than what I ever imagined. So life is not a dress rehearsal. Grab the chance when you get it. Sailing the ocean of inspiration each day to me means living consciously, being aware of the choices that I'm making. It means releasing beliefs that no longer serve me, getting rid of the past and allowing that to be in the past and embracing the present because that's the gift of today. Expecting good each day. I've had to work on that because I tended to be a little more negative. The glass, yeah, it really was half empty a lot of times. And as I've changed to the glass being half full, it's made such a difference in my life. And not only has the glass become half full, but most days that glass is overflowing because spirit is so good to me. And I've learned that the universe is for me. Visualize an unlimited life. And as I visualize, my mental equivalent expands to be so much more than what it ever has been in the past. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to sail on the ocean of inspiration each day by not limiting yourself, by not holding on to beliefs that no longer serve you, but opening yourself up to spirit that will be there, that will have your back, that will provide unlimited inspiration, unlimited whatever it is that you want. That's the ocean of inspiration. And I invite you to sail that today and every day so that you live the best life possible. I know that for you. I know that for me. And together we encourage each other. 
flesh. Mm -hmm. oh. 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 